simple question, which is, when are you going to put the cigarette in? <laughs> 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 thank, thank, thank you very much. No. Um, we don't need a cigarette in this stage. Or, as it's a very special thing, will it be a Churchillian type cigar? <laughs> I think it would be a cigarette. I like all sitting here just thinking. Um, art's about telling stories and perpetuating history. So I want to tell you a story, and I want to also want to tell your children a story. And I want to tell their children a story. It's all about, if you look around here, Alexis Sway behind you, um, we painted, he was, that was painted in whatever it was, 1841, 1842. But still telling the story about that man who was the first celebrity chef in Britain today because he built our kitchens and made our, some of the food we still made. And that's exactly what cavemen did. They were, they were turning their lives into pictures so they could explain their lives to themselves but also then explain them after that. And that's in some respects, of course, what this is. I mean, this is part of us explaining our own history to ourselves. Mm -hmm. So I think Cajun and us are not at all different, I'm afraid. <laughs> I think, I think that's apparently particularly because I have cro magnum brows. <laughs> so um, I have some sympathy with Cajun. Very good profile, So how did they come to um, put stripes and stars and things on? When well, that's not what they were seeing. It may have been what we were seeing. Homer says that Greece has wine dark sea. Sea isn't wine dark, because wine dark is dark red. Homer saw dark red. The Finns don't have a word for blue, for instance. Um, what, you, what you imagine, you, what you see through your eyes depends on what you interpret through your brain. If you don't have the concept of interpreting something through, or they're different. So they may have been seeing totally different things when they then mm. paint. Their, their little arrows and shapes may have been their representation of something that we see as fir trees or birds of animals or their own hands or any of that sort of stuff. Um, so, I mean, the idea of representing something figuratively actually as it is only really comes in. Greeks, Assyrians, anything. Um, in the Renaissance, they didn't have respect. So all of this is about how what you see transfers to what the world is. It's not three dimensional. No, or, or not, not in, not always reflecting what other people see. It's reflecting a um, uh, an idiom that those people have themselves. Like the work you're doing reflects our idiom of what we understand people to be and how they how they look. If you look at what the Greeks did, um, they had an idealized idiom. If you look at um, Renaissance art, it has a romantic idiom. If you look at British 1960s, they all look like they've been slightly tortured. Mm. Yes. It's, it's what they feel. It's what they feel and what they impose, what they feel onto what there is, and then they represent that. And I think the same thing is true in any sort of art, whether it's a paint painting or or all this. Certainly. So, is this got a question for Francis or Jonathan? <coughs> Museum 
on Ice Age art. Do you know I actually took two groups of Reform Club members around? Oh, I think yes. Yes. I think that was not some ways you said. I was thinking how in that exhibition it was interesting how a lot of what we took for granted now as more late, late modern art was in fact already being practiced in certain ways. And the idea of figures and perspective we play up. But I think I think the idea of art Art, art is a way, as I say, art is a way of trying to explain the world to ourselves and to preserve that world and transfer it. And there was a spectacular piece in the Ice Age exhibition, which was a, 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 effectively a ventriloquist stunt. It was a sort of a big box body and a box head and two movable arms. And the idea of being a flickering cave at night and a shaman is somehow making these arms move and the head turn. And this magical interpretation of the world. I mean, this is magic to me. This is the first time I've ever seen my head in 3D. <laughs> ever. And the, 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 I have no idea, honestly. This the nose is, is, my, is my grandfather. And I can see that immediately. It's very it's, it's fascinating. But it's also stunning. It's, it's stunning the idea that one can represent a, a, a living thing in two hours in, in clay. I mean, when you started, you started with a block of clay like that. In two, places. And two hours later, we have this handsome devil. <laughs> 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 You're a large man. <laughs> you, you know, you've got very, you've got very lovely features that you've got, very, very nice. But it needs time to go back and look at it, and there's, there's definitely lots to change. But I've got the essence of it, I'm very pleased with. Um, I, I think we're very happy with the pro most of the profile. So there's not too much to do. Mm. And I like to do as much as I can in two hour sessions because then. You know, I actually don't change that face that much after that. That stays the same. My ears, I discover, are totally different shapes. Yes, they are. Oh, that's all right. Thank you. <laughs> 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 no, 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 they are in real life as well. Yeah. I mean, they're going to be changed. Uh, no, no, they're, they're, they're right. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Who else has a question? Is it very disconcerting when someone starts off with a very serious face and then sort of Half well, three, three session, they grin the rest of the time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's terribly difficult when I'm doing a very fast sculpture because um, um, you know, I sort of have to go into some sort of tunnel vision and I have to concentrate so much that um, if the person isn't concentrating with you in the way, it changes that feeling. Um, and it doesn't matter what's going on behind you, but it matters about the two things that are happening here. And I tend to get a character that comes from inside the person. And, and I like that work, it's fast work, it's good. But I think there's an interesting thing that happens as well. I, I think at the beginning, you're not particularly conscious of how you want it to turn out. No, of course. Which is and good. By, and by the last sort of half hour, when you can start out of the corner of your eye to see the shape <laughs> taking place, you start to think about how you want it to look. The ego so will out. The ego will out. You know, 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 you want to look sort of relaxed or you want to look, you know, I mean, I'm the chairman of this place, I want to look marketing and real, <laughs> because you don't, because you end up, as it were, being this mix between what you want to look like from the inside and what you actually end up looking like from the outside. And that's when you rely on someone like Francis to give you a, a, a sort of a proper polish as opposed to... Um, I found it looking very Roman-like between the two and Yes. That was the feel I got when I stood the side. Very, yeah, it's a very strong look. Yeah, some people over there thought you were being a toga. Yeah. A toga? <laughs> oh, well. That's right. So, it really was coming across, you know, like a very Roman feeling. Roman. Ahead. Anybody else for a question? Uh, um, yes, I did. I'm not sure how many of you did. Because that's amazing to go to us. Sorry? I just want to tell you, it took you normally to do how many sessions you need to finish. Normally? 
if people come to sit with you, it could be a year. Okay, I mean, um, the Duke of Edinburgh, I mean, the Duke of Edinburgh sculpture is absolutely fantastic. So, how long do just yeah? How long did that take? Well, um, I had four sessions, four sessions of an hour each, and um, in between it goes back to my studio, and they may have two months gap, so we're busy, you know. So it, it did go on for probably over a year. So I don't know, and because it's like a quarter size. It's very difficult than this. You can't. You see, with this, I go up to John from measuring and go back so quick. But when it's a line and a quarter, I have to change that mm -hmm. to a different measurement. And I've got this amazing um, calipers that Brian made me, and uh, that does that automatically. But then I have to keep standing back. So it takes a lot longer. But you're doing Prince Charles now. So yeah. how, when did you start him, and how, how far in are you, and when do you expect to be finished? Well, I've had a few ups and downs with Charles because. Um, what happened, um, well I've had two sessions, and he's very kind, he's going to let me have another three. I had an hour and a half the last time. He did fall asleep quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that, you know, but it, it, that was okay. I'm very nervous when I go to the rules, you know, it's really scary. It's not, I can't really get around that yet. Um, I don't think you're allowed to put your head No, no, <laughs> Any other questions? Is that the first time you've ever sat for? Um, yes. Uh, in fact, it, it's, I've been. It's hard to get in. I've been. <laughs> I'm lossily intimidated about the whole thing. My my great uncle had a bust, and it was family legend because he was the only person in my entire family who had ever had a bust of anything for anything for any reason whatsoever. And so the idea that I was sort of 60 years later going to going to bust that tradition um, that's that's absolutely <laughs> terrified me. Yeah, so this is the first time that not only I've sat, but I think any any immediate member of my family has sat. Um, Please. It's a strange it's a strange thing to do. Um, Sophie, another brilliant natter. Thank you. Um, yeah. Natter is Friday night at the Reform, and this is. I hope it's been an education as well as a good opportunity to drink past a couple of staff so it sounded to me when I was facing in that direction like you were doing rather well. Um, Francis, thank you. Thank you so very much. much. Thank you for sitting. That's really been a, a, an amazing achievement. We will finish this. Yes, we will. And there is apparently a wicked secretary sat with Lloyd George upstairs, which is not all to be happy with. No one's um, happy with the but, statue. But there is a tradition, apparently, in this club that um, you have to be dead before the thing goes up. <laughs> so um, if you go downstairs first,